Hello friends, hope you are well. Welcome to my review of the ASUS ProArt Studio Book. Now, this laptop was something that blew my mind when I first unboxed it. And as I used it for the last few weeks, it has certainly grown on me. Though I will add, it is hard for me to position who this laptop is for, and there are a few things that irked me. So let's get into a review of this ASUS ProArt Studio Book. Let's start with the obvious. It's a large laptop and it's really cool to see big screen laptops making their way into the market. And while the price is not something to scoff at, it's still awesome. This version is the StudioBook Pro X W730 and it costs 4,200 Australian dollars. It comes with six core Intel Xeon with 12 threads at 2.8 gigahertz, 64 gigabytes of RAM, four terabytes of PCIe storage, RAID 0 on the CPU, which actually ensures the fastest possible storage performance with speeds of up to six gigabits compared to the typical four gigabits SSD. Then a Quadro RTX 5000 mobile version and the screen is a 1980 by 1600 resolution at 60 hertz with an amazing color reproduction. This is an absolute beast of a laptop. It sounds like something that belongs in a server rack and the price is certainly there to match it. I adore the large screen. It's great to look at and editing videos on it has been great. Height doesn't really help with Premiere, so I find myself lacking space compared to my ultra wide, but that's not really a fair comparison to a large laptop like this. However, the performance is amazing. 4K video is like nothing I have seen before. It outperforms my desktop and I wish I could edit all my videos on here as long as I'm plugged into power. I am happy, but I have to return this laptop, unfortunately. Now, working on a Fusion 360 has been fantastic too, and the screen really fits well for that use case, where a more rectangular screen is better for designing parts and 3D images. The large power brick that comes with the laptop is difficult to carry around. In fact, the 17-inch laptop is generally quite bulky to get around anyway, but that's understandable as to why. However, this laptop is almost silent. If you remember my review of the Asus Duo, which sounded like a jet engine revving to show off to the boys across the island, the studio book is dead silent. I can only hear a soft fan turn on during a render process, and even then, I only noticed it because the house was quiet at midnight. The keyboard is a dream to write on, and so far, Asus has not disappointed me in the keyboard department. Each laptop so far has been absolutely great. Fantastic. However, the backlight design baffles me. The light is under the keys and does not shine through the key itself. And all you get in the evening is an outline of the button. The keys should have some sort of see-through center to let you know what the keys are when you are pressing them. But no, and that's pretty disappointing. Then there is the touchpad, and it is a complete disaster. I found it to be completely unwieldy during my use, and a mouse was a must-have. It was hard to use, the mouse didn't work very well, and I kept tapping into the useless shortcuts when I just wanted to control the mouse. To add to that, I found no use in the shortcuts nor this mini second screen. This keyboard already has a numpad, which was the only thing I could think of using the second screen for, which was cool in other computers that didn't have it, but in this case, it's kind of useless. The second screen brings zero to no value for a workhorse like this, and removing it should be a must. Replace it with a large, flush with the case touchpad. This touchpad should rival Apple's, and I know Asus can do it, I have seen it. This is not a laptop for a kid at school to show off his cool touchscreen screen. This is a work laptop. And here I thought I'd show you what the webcam looks like and the microphone, so you guys can see how those work. The microphone is adequate, but the webcam could do with a bit of work. I have a really nice light to the left. Not everybody has that. If I turn it off, it becomes a horrible dark mess, even though there's plenty of light around. As you can see, my hands move around. I'm at 30 frames. Also, I wanted to talk about and let you experience what it would be like using this webcam about the sound. The sound is very adequate. The bass response is fantastic and Harmon and Carden did a pretty good job at the end of the day. It's a shame that, well, it's not louder. I wish it was a little bit louder. I think there could be a little bit more headroom, but I think they've definitely toned it down just to allow the sound to flow rather than peak and sort of crash and burn. But as you can see, this webcam, as I move my hands, is not very good, especially in low light conditions, which is more likely what people will be using because they don't have studio lights. And the microphone, well, okay, will be great for voice calls at work. Let's talk I.O. We got plenty of it. We have large power pin 
HDMI, two USBs, a headphone jack, a large SD card slot, and on the other side is a full-sized Ethernet port, another USB, and two Thunderbolt 3 ports. In built, we have a Wi-Fi 6, and one thing to add is that it also has a fingerprint reader. Though not a part of the actual on button, uh, it's nice to have. It helps with logging in every time, especially when you arrive in the office and you just tap into it, it'll log you in because you don't necessarily turn this device off. Gaming wise, yes, I played a few games on it. This RTX Quadra compares to an RTX 2060. So considering this isn't really a gaming laptop, but on the off chance you get some time, off from work to play some games, you certainly can. It performs magnificently. I played Tomb Raider and did some texts with the RTX on. It was great and it looked great with the colors that this screen comes with. The laptop can go flat, which I was excited about when I noticed that during the unboxing. However, I also thought it would mean the screen was a touch screen, but it's not. I suppose the question is, what is the point of that? Maybe try to share the screen with multiple people around you on a round table or a coffee shop. I, I just don't see it. Though I did hear a comment that if you are sitting on the couch with the laptop on your lap and your young child comes on and grabs the screen and just pulls down, there'll be no damage that comes to it. I will say this though, to me it sounds like an unrealistic once in a lifetime occurrence as you browse Facebook to see who had a better weekend. I understand that companies think creators are mobile, but the type of creator who can afford this is working making bank and is using it intensely, not at the coffee table, certainly not on the couch, but in an office. This is a laptop that is going to sit on a desk with an extra monitor, separate keyboard and mouse because Facebooking is the only thing they will be able to do on battery anyway. Now in all honesty, I jest with the battery life. Facebook is not the only thing you'll be doing on the battery. You can certainly work a lot of heavy tasks on this laptop on battery. It does last actually a long time. I was using it at in another room. I didn't bring the charger because it's a giant brick and it lasted me the whole time I was in that spare room, which is about three or four hours hours working away at work and I was very happy with the battery I didn't have to charge it however when I did start to render things that's when the battery started getting eaten up the Xeon platform is very efficient and so is the RTX 5000 mobile version so it doesn't actually chew a lot of power because it doesn't create a lot of heat which is why the fan stays so quiet and doesn't need giant cooling fans but it also doesn't perform like a giant cooled fan laptop, so that's something to consider. But there is something that makes this laptop special, and that is the Quadro graphics card. So what's a Quadro graphics card, you might ask? Well, the first thing to understand is that all NVIDIA graphics cards are built on the same underlying GPU architecture. They start life as a highest-end enterprise-level card, like the P1 for Tesla. Then slowly, the consumers and business-grade customers get their hands on the cut-down cards. The architecture describes the types of arrangements of the components needed for graphical processing. This generation is called Touring. It covers all the GeForce RTX and Quadro RTX cards, where the RTX stands for real-time ray tracing. The Quadro cards generally have extra memory and processing capabilities. Quadro cards are targeted at professional users, and so they come with a host of professional benefits. One of Quadro's main advantages for professional users like engineers, designers, and architects is the level of compatibility it provides with professional applications. A lot of this is due to NVIDIA's deep pockets and partnerships with independent software vendors like Autodesk, Ansys, Dassault, Systems, PTC, Siemens. Many of these applications certify Quadro cards for use in their applications. More importantly, the developers tune their applications for optimum use with Quadro cards. This tuning can result in significant performance improvements. In a benchmark test I found online of SolarWorks, an RTX 4000 performs two times better than a GeForce RTX 2070, though the RTX 27 performs much better in a video game. Different tools for different jobs. However, this card is the RTX 5000 mobile version, which performs really well. In my testing, it's as good as an RTX 2060. Luckily, I recently started learning Autodesk Fusion to design parts to print on my 3D printer, a hobby I highly recommend to anyone looking to have some technical and creative problem solving. Check out my Instagram to see some of my prints. Now you see, this is the right tool for that job. I tested Autodesk Fusion 360 and designed some parts to print on my Ender 3 3D printer. And I will admit Fusion worked flawlessly and mesh rendering was smooth as butter. In comparison to my desktop who struggled with loading, 
loading and displaying a certain STL file that I could load on here very quickly. And even once it converted to a mesh, it was slow as hell. This studio book did not stutter at all. The CPU is a Xeon, a great performer in the server and compute space, and it's a great performer here. With a large memory buffer, it performs fantastically. Here it is in Cinebench, it's done well, but it's no AMD. Overall, I saw no hiccups and no issues. It performed better than my desktop, but comparably to AMD, it's not as good. So in summary, who is this $4,200 laptop for? Well, it's not for your general creator nor influencer. First off, because many can't afford it. And secondly, they won't use half the power this laptop can offer. This is for someone in a very particular industry with a very particular set of skills. Uh, they want to potentially declutter their life, take their work from office to home, to holiday home. Someone who earns big money from long-term projects that require constant fine-tuning using things like AutoCAD. And in fact, I, know, I do know someone who would love a laptop like this. He works in designing high-voltage electrical structures and requires to test and render plans, drawings, and test certain scenarios. And in that case, the cost of this laptop for that company would be a drop in the ocean. This could also be an architect's laptop, a compact powerhouse of a laptop that works wonders under the hood, but lacks in some of the ease of use areas. But I can see that being forgiven for what it actually holds deep down inside. Now, big thanks to Asus for sending me this laptop for review. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this laptop. Is it for you? Would you actually buy it? So thanks for watching this review. If you like this video, then tap that like button. And if you would like to see more, then please consider subscribing to this channel. It really means a lot and you support Aussie content. Thanks for watching and bye.